There is a heated debate raging in the writer community and it revolves around the two E's, editors and errors. On one side, you have authors who say you shouldn't dare publish a book without having it professionally edited. On the other side, you have authors who are willing to roll the dice with the DIY method. They're self-publishing, so they figure they might as well self-edit as well. I'm kind of on the fence with this one, and I truly do see it from both sides. I've been that author who couldn't afford to pay for proper editing. The author who feels so strongly about the quality of their story, you believe that readers would be willing to overlook a few mishaps. Because you read that bitch a thousand times and you couldn't have missed much, right? But I'm also an avid reader, so I've seen it from the other side of the game. Books that are so butchered that the amount of errors take away from the story. It's just a bad look. And that brings me to my next book review, Let Me Pimp or Let Me Die. My mama always said I was ass backwards, so naturally I would read Let Me Pimp or Let Me Die Part 2 before finally reading the first one several years later. The original tells the story of Ricky, who after having an in-depth conversation with a veteran street hustler, decides to quit his 9 to 5 and become a full-time pimp. After mapping out and executing a seemingly flawless plan, he quickly adopts the name Jackpot and builds a profitable stable of hoes. While his ascension to the top of the ladder starts off fairly well, this game is not without pain and tribulations. Over time, Jackpot sees his empire topple as jealousy from outside and within his own ranks takes hold. When I read part two, I was blown away. The author is actually a former pimp himself, and he did a magnificent job of painting the scene of this underground industry that most only know from a general surface perspective. The lingo, the culture, the unwritten rules, he nailed it all in a way that was nothing short of masterful. It was so well done, it made my own pimp tale come off as watered down drivel by comparison. I hate to say that, but it's true. In fact, I'm rewriting that story word for word right now, deep diving with more research into the culture to make sure it's a better reflection of this oh so fascinating world. Let me pimp or let me die is that authentic. And I'm talking about both parts. Now, maybe somewhere in between parts one and two, I became a reading snob of sorts. I don't know. But part one was a bit of a letdown, and it goes back to the two E's. This book is littered with errors. I mean, the simplest shit that anyone should have been able to fucking see, like... I mean, these are unforgivable errors that have me wondering if the author even bothered reading it and tried to clean up anything or if he just said, fuck it, I'm done and I'm publishing it. I understand that professional editing can be expensive for the first time author who barely has enough money to self-publish to begin with. And Lord knows, I know that paying for editing doesn't guarantee that you're going to sell any more books than if you didn't. You've done everything right, including paying for a professional editor, and your books still aren't moving. It can be a very shitty feeling. Still, I think it's important to at least have a beta reader look over your work, even if it's just a friend or a family member. A second set of eyes can go a long way in cleaning up those errors you are sure to overlook, no matter how many times you read and reread it yourself. I'll probably go back and read part two again to see if it's better written and presented, 
or if I was just so blown away by the authenticity that I overlooked the flaws. After all, even traditionally published books may have an error or two. But like the kids say, there's levels to this shit, people. Peace.